perhaps the biggest game in history of Rutgers, number three, Louisville, against number 15, Rutgers. Jamal, what do you remember about the atmosphere the most? I mean, this is probably the first game I called home to tell my friends and family to watch because it was our coming out party. It was crazy. The students were going nuts. Yeah, for me, that Thursday night, I just remember walking out into the stadium, never seeing an atmosphere like that here at Rutgers. That Thursday night was incredible. And I think for me, what stood out the most were the white towels. I, I don't know how many thousands of white towels were just flying in the air. And that just got me totally hyped and amped. So that was a great atmosphere I've never experienced in my life. Man, the atmosphere was electric. <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to play in college and in the NFL. And that game versus Louisville, by far the best game day atmosphere I've ever experienced. Coach Chiano, you're the main reason the atmosphere was like that. We look forward to being that way again. What do you remember about that Thursday night? Well, I'll tell you what, it was really, uh, first of all, the reason was these players. But that week was incredible. It wasn't just that game. It was, it was Tuesday, uh, 10,000 students waiting for tickets to go on sale and guys sleeping out. And, and I remember one of my guys came to me about 10 o'clock at night and said, hey, there's, there's thousands and thousands of kids over in the lot. So we ordered some pizzas, like any good New Jersey guy would, right? And we brought uh, 50 or 100 pizzas over there. You can imagine those went pretty quickly. So it was an entire week leading up to what uh, these guys have mentioned, the biggest game in Rutgers history. Let's watch the, uh, the first play of the game. It's a little bit unusual. Correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, but you're in a, a wide-open set, which you would use sometimes, but maybe not as often as some of your other traditional sets. And you throw the ball deep on the first play, maybe telling the opponent you're going to play it wide open. Take us through this play. Well, you're right. You know, now we line up like this more. But back then, heck, we were a pro-style offense. But we wanted to set the tone early in the football game that day. There's nothing we won't do tonight. And as you know, you know, you had a guy like Kenny Britt. He was a young kid at that time, but he was a weapon. And we were, you know, even if we didn't hit it, we wanted them to know that you're going to have to loosen up a little bit so we could do what we're fixing to do right here. And that's give that ball to Ray Rice. Coach Gianna, tell us what kind of player Ray Rice was. No, he was one of the best I've ever coached, Jerry. And I'll tell you, the thing that you love about Ray is as the game went on, he got stronger. And he really did. If you fed him the ball, he just kept getting better and better. While other people started to get tired, he got stronger. You know, no offense to the two present defensive linemen that are with us, but Ray and that offensive line, they, they, they took the game over at the end. Now, to the credit of the two D linemen that we're, we're visiting with today, they took the game over from the very beginning, but it took the offensive line a little bit more time, and obviously with Ray Rice in the backfield at the end of the game, the defense continues to control line of scrimmage, and the O-line and Ray Rice was taken over. Uh, we talked about the crowd. This is an example. I have a home crowd really helps the team. This isn't the only time that Louisville jumped offside when they couldn't hear the game. What, what was it like on the field with the crowd going? I mean, it was loud. I mean, as a D-lineman, I love playing at home because I don't think Louisville knew what the New Jersey fans were going to unleash on them today. I mean, they were extremely loud. They were making noise. And you can see the offensive linemen, they kept looking down inside at the ball because they couldn't hear anything. Yeah, it was insane. Um, you know, I can barely remember because I'm so cued in on the, the play. But uh, it was just pure chaos, and I just loved it. We all loved it. We had a great time. We enjoyed, we enjoyed it. Um, just crazy. That is a fact. Uh, hey, Mel, this next play for you. Take us through this. You make the tackle, and I'm not sure if that's a JOP, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ramel's the best in JOP right? now. <laughs> Gary, I like you, so I'll, I'll let that one slide. <laughs> I think you do a great job on uh, BTN. But uh, obviously, this was created by Eric Foster's penetration. Uh, Eric Foster, Florida guy, loved him. One of my favorite uh, teammates of all time. Great energy, loved the chop, um, but he created some penetration that allowed me to come in and clean things up. So he didn't get the job initially, of course. Hey, okay. All right, so Coach, Coach Gian, tell us about this play. Well, this is a basic concept, right, where we're going to stick a guy down in front of the safety and then try to throw the post behind it. 
Uh, unfortunately, we, we threw it a little behind him, and then you see the Louisville guy making fun of our chop there, which didn't go over big with the fellas. But, you know, we really – I knew that the team was very excited. The crowd was crazy. Mike was a sophomore quarterback in, in the biggest game of his career. And really, uh, we just needed to keep our cool. People forget the year before we had gone out to Louisville and really got shellacked. And it was a, a rough night. So when, when we threw this interception, we were already down 7 nothing. I knew that we just needed to slow everything down. But during games, you know, I'm a, I'm a fiery Italian, as you know, Jerry. But during games, I always tell the guys, they don't need me barking at them during the game. They got a, they got a bunch of guys on the other side that are doing that. Practice is when I get after the year round. So we'll see. Okay, this is third and 13, Jamal. And to me, you're a big part of this play. It's Devon Thompson's interception. Take us through this play. I mean, it was third down, so, the, you know, the, the crowd was going nuts. And it's third and 13, so it was a longer down play for us. So we went with a four-man rush with the four guys up front. So it was myself, William Beckford, E. Foster, and Ramel Meekins. They ran a twist game on the left side. So my job from the back side was really get up the field and bull rush that offensive lineman into the quarterback. I mean, they had such a big offensive line just to kind of create that pressure to push him into Brom. And I ended up playing with Braum in the pros after this, and he talks about this play with, man, I would have had it if you didn't push him into me. So, and for me, I felt like, you know, to be honest with you, I was excited for Devron because when he made a play, I made a play. So I didn't make the actual play, but he was able to have success off of it. So, I mean, we were going nuts. I was happy for the pick. I mean, a great ball disruption, and it was just a play that had to be made. First and 10, you know, right after the turnover, tell us about the call. Well, you know, you're exactly right. It was an opportunity. The crowd was going crazy. And I, I just clicked over to the offensive staff and said, take a shot. And you know, as a head coach, Jerry, I don't really care what the play is. Just take a shot. I want the ball going down the field and see if we can't make something happen right away. And I think uh, we kind of caught Louisville a little bit on their heels. And uh, Taekwon, Mike makes a great throw. Taekwon, a great catch. And, you know, it's a tie football game. Taekwon, was there any doubt you were getting the ball? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Like you said, uh, Mike's last pass was an INT. I didn't help him on that play, but for him to have the confidence in me and to come right back to me the next play, it was sudden change. We just got a huge turnover, and we went over this in practice. The coach said we're going to get one of two looks, and this was one of them. Mike threw a hell of a ball. The offensive line did a great job. I still remember to this day after watching the film, uh, some of the coaches got on me for the, the celebration after the touchdown. <laughs> so, so Coach, I always appreciate it. Would you like to name, name names? <laughs> <laughs> so Co Coach Shannon, hey, he yeah. just Do said. Do you utilize your receivers when they celebrate, or are you going to get on when they celebrate? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, okay. it's, it's the same deal, man. It's about staying in the moment. Like we say, keep chopping. Don't get too high, don't get too low. And now being a coach, I understand what, what coach was, was teaching me and telling me at the time. And I'm going to do the same with my players. All right. So coach, it's 25-7 now. Obviously not going the way you wanted it to. Uh, what, what's your, your mindset right now? Well, you know, a lot of things had gone against us and it was 25-7. And the year before they had run us out of the stadium at their place. so. I thought it was critical right here that we answer the bell and at least make it a, a two-score game. Because uh, if, if we didn't do something here, this game had a chance of getting out of hand. And that's why this was maybe the play of the game, really. And it, you know, it only makes it 14 points for us, but it really is the play that, that put it back to being a competitive football game. Yeah, it's just a little belly flip play to Ray. And I'll tell you what, you know, he was as fast as he needed to be, Jerry. Right? When, he, when, when someone was on his tail, he found a way to kick it into a gear. And to score there at that point was critical. You know, going into the half, we needed to, we needed to make that thing a two-score game, and, and they did it. How many times does a coach make an adjustment in halftime that really makes a difference? What percent? The most important thing, there was no schematic changes. Literally, I just went into the locker room and told them, look, fellas, you just took the best possible punch that the number three team in the country could throw at you. And guess what? We're still standing. 
But now if we just go out and play the way we have, the worm's going to turn. I promised them. I said, the worm will turn if you keep chopping. And you could feel the confidence in that room. Those kids really believed it. And that's a big thing because the year before now, it got out of hand at Louisville. And it was a Thursday night game just like this. And it got out of hand. And our, our guys, I really could feel going down that tunnel, going to take the field in the second half. They knew they were going to win that game. So, guys, Coach gives you confidence at halftime. You come out. This is third and four. As I watch the game, this is a critical down. And you don't give Rob much room at all. You guys remember this play. Take us through what's going through your mind. He looks frustrated as you, as you see him. And I think it had a lot to do with the defensive play. Romel, am I right? Yeah, all around. We had good pressure up front. And I see uh, number 43, Ron Giraud. Um, he was all over that guy, and that's yes. funny right there. Um, great player. He did his job. You, you see 11 guys on the field doing what they're supposed to do, you know, and that was a big thing we preached. You'll want 11, and everybody was tasked with that every single play to do everything you could to get your job done, and don't stop until that happens, and you see a great example of that on this play. You got pressure up front. You got the DBs guarding, and it, every, everyone's working together. And it's flowing very nicely and smooth. Jamal, take us through this next play. This, this is just another example. It, it's third and one. I mean, these are critical plays in the game that, you know, you look back and the line of scrimmage is being taken over by Rutgers. And, and to me, that's why this game was won. This is third and one. Tell us what's going on here, Jamal. I mean, you know, third and one, what we're thinking is they're going to do a direct run. And up front, we just say, listen, do your job, do your job, do your job. And the thing about it is you want it to be the person that's accountable to your team. Because I have, a, you know, a lot of belief in our system and in what we did. And I knew if I did my job, the guy behind me was going to do his job. So just that accountability and that belief and, and that trust in each of us individually that we'll come together collectively because... Like you said, third and one, they get that, you never know what can happen. So to get that stop in a game like this, I mean, it was huge. KB. Yeah, so so as we watch this play, man, Mike Till throws a dime. Great ball by Mike, great catch by Kenny. And you can see the speed that coach was talking about. Kenny was only a freshman on a big stage, and that was a huge play. I'm just happy he got on top of that fumble. <laughs> Because that, that that could have been bad, but we had the momentum. You could feel it in the stadium, and we just wanted to finish this drive with a touchdown. Coach, it looks like the offensive line just takes over on this one. Yeah, you can feel it, right? I mean, it's a it's a toss play, but it's a toss play that's designed to go up inside, and you feel the entire defense of Louisville getting pushed backward. And you know, when, when Ray gets that, when you get Ray a crack like that, and it starts moving the opposite direction, he's dangerous. He looks like he stuck his left foot in the ground and he was heading north. <laughs> There's no <laughs> doubt. Big, big boys up front. Coach, two point plays, I don't know, 30% of them successful. But you were chasing the points because they had gotten two points on a conversion early in the game. One of the key points in the game that you got the two point conversion successful, and that puts you three points behind in the game which we're going to see the final drive just makes all the difference in the world. Tell us about the two-point conversion. Well, you're right. You know, we're a little different. I'm a little different. I, we have a great statistician at Rutgers. He's a, he's a, a math uh, professor. So we had a different two-point chart than probably the rest of the country. And it was all based on years and years of, of uh, statistical study. So it was, you know, still – relatively early in, you know, in the game. It's late in the third quarter, but it's still not where a lot of people would go for it. But we, we had the play. We knew what we wanted to run. And I was so excited for a lot of reasons. That we, you know, number one, that we cut it to three points. But when we, earlier in the game, had that, that PAT, when we blocked the, the point after attempt, that was poor coaching by me. I had not conveyed with the team well enough that when you block a, a PAT or a field goal, what to do with it. And, you know, we watched the ball, and, and I'm ashamed to say it, but Louisville was coached better. They scooped it up and ran it in for two. So we've used that clip, believe it or not, from that day on. I've used that clip for 20 years of coaching to teach when a field goal or a, pun is, or a field goal is blocked, what to do with it. If any doubt, we're scooping and scoring. We're going with it. 
Coach, I got to tell you, you made me feel good because I was at LSU, the same thing happened to me at Arkansas, and I felt the same way. It was my fault, and from that point on, we showed that play every year. It's a tough lesson to learn. We lost that game. We won this one. So. Yeah. I'd rather learn from the W, Colleen. I don't know about yeah, you, Colleen. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> what do you remember about this play? Come on, talk to us. Uh, getting off the ball, I know we had a, a stunt where I just blew through the A-gap. Um, I remember the center trying to hold on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> I got to Brom, and then I just hear the stadium erupt. And I just remember uh, William Beckford, Eric Foster, Jamal Westman running at me. And moments like that are, are priceless. And I always remember those. It was just great to be able to have a big play for my team at that point. Uh, oh, that was, uh, I think it's important to note you had two sacks in that game. That's good. <laughs> you remember both of them? <laughs> Are you sure you remember both of them? What's that? Did you remember both sacks? I don't really recall the other one, but this one was very <laughs> <laughs> I remember the second one. I remember the second one. Well, well, I'll you the it for me. Hey, Jerry, I got, yeah. I got to tell you, Ramel was the guy that was always moaning and groaning. Why are you taking me off the field on third down, coach? I'm a pass rusher. I'm a pass rusher. <laughs> well, hey, you, you led the team in sacks that year, right? We tied. Thank you, Jamal. I'm glad I didn't have to say so. Hey, that I got you, man. D-line. D-line. That get off. That get off. <laughs> uh, you wind up getting the ball back on your eight yard line. And, Coach, I want to talk to you about the strategy of a game at that point because you can go into overtime. So let's talk about it in real time, guys. Go ahead, Coach. Talk to us about the strategy coming out of your own and knowing you could go into overtime if you wanted to. Yeah, our whole thought was this. Now's the time. If we ever had a drive in us, let's, do, let's get it going here and gobble up five minutes and walk away with the win. And uh, we knew how we were going to do it. We felt part of our plan was to wear them down. And in the fourth quarter, we better be able to run the ball down their throat. The body, the body, the body. The body, the body, the body. You got it, Wes. Yes, sir. I mean, and, and look at this drive <laughs> from the sideline. You got, what, 12, 13 guys on that offense that played in the NFL at one point. That whole offensive line played in the NFL at one point. So there's a lot of talent up front, and it all came together at the end of the game where we needed them. Entire offense played in the National Football League, which is just unbelievable. But just a, just a bunch of guys, man, coming together, playing confident, just doing what they're supposed to do, just executing, doing your job. Ty, what's going on in the huddle right now? Uh, Mike was. Is it quiet confidence or is someone talking? Is Mike Peel talking? Are you talking? What's going on? So Mike, Mike was the one always talking in the huddle. A lot of guys, we didn't really speak much, and he was just a great leader, very confident. And before before the play, he'd be like, "Ray, let's go here." He'll call the play, and we just block our behinds off and. Ray was doing his thing, but every it was just a quiet confidence in that huddle. And we, we knew what we were trying to do, and we just went out there and did it. It's all about execution, man. And football is a simple game when you break it down. You just got to execute. Jamal, I think most of the time when the other side of the ball is on the field, we're on the bench talking to our coaches and talking strategy. Are you guys on the sideline now watching this or are you sitting down? I think we were still on the sideline because we always thought next play, next play, next right. play. So we're on the sideline looking on the jumbotron and we're seeing them just hammer away. And every play wasn't a positive play, but right. they just kept hammering, they kept chopping, chopping, chopping. And we were fired up on the sideline of the D-line. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Jamal, Jamal might be wrong and I hate to call him out right now because there's still a lot of game left. So we're sitting there still game planning about yeah. what's going to happen if we score a touchdown. Here's a <laughs> they score a field goal. And if you, mm -hmm. we actually had to go on the field at the end of the game to win the game. So the game was over, over and I don't remember many points in any game that we played where we were really spectators. And for me, I was getting back to the bench and pulling the rest of the D line, especially E. Foster, all the energy he had. <laughs> he needs to reserve his energy. So oh, sit down, sit down, get some water, and let's get it done. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
You know what I really listened uh, most of the time on this drive, Jerry, there was only one time on that third and six. Again, I didn't care what play. I remember Coach Paterno saying it. Players, not plays. Players, not plays. When it was third and six, I went to the guy that I had the utmost respect and trust in, Brian Leonard. I just, I didn't tell him the play. I just clicked over and said, get the ball to Leonard. And then I clicked back to the The swing pass, right? The swing pass, yep. It was a great call. It was a great call. (laughs) I can't take credit for the call, but I said, get the ball. I know, but it was low risk. I mean, it really was. You can go into overtime. It was a call that didn't put your team at risk. And obviously, you got a big play No doubt. Man, look at the like, Coach totally said totally different. Yeah. Okay, coach now, said this is a little bit of a memorable moment. Look at their faces. Say it again. Oh, I thought that was a silver. Okay. All right, third and four. Center the ball. Hmm. Jeremy Ito, very dependable. No doubt. Very dependable. That's why you want him in your foursome, Jerry. <laughs> That's a young coach, Is that? Yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. Here? <laughs> Seriously. Look at Coach. Look at the crowd, man. Coach can wear you out. Hey, Wes, a lot of people forget the William Gay play, though. Yes. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. He was, he was in the safe call. I mean, he wasn't part of the question. He was just a game player. Mm-hmm. Jeez. I remember yeah. this field goal because I was nervous because I had a uh, offside. I jumped on one of our earlier field goals in the game. So I remember the last one. I was like, don't move, Wes. Do not move <laughs> until they move. Protect and cover. Protect and cover. <laughs> don't move. Because I had one, and I know you only get one around here. So I said, don't move until they move. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you only get one, right, West? You only, you only get one. That's... <laughs> That's it. That's it. I think Unless your name's Kenny. Unless your name's Kenny, name's Kenny Britt, then you get two. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, you got to give him two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coach hit on it earlier, man. Just prepare through the event. Like, it was no big halftime speech. It just continue to prepare through the event, and that's what we right. did. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Protect and cover. West. Protect and cover. <laughs> that was big. I was like 267 now. <laughs> Coach, Coach Susan was in your brain, wasn't he, Jamal? <laughs> <laughs> Callie. Cali. Oh. Ito, Ito said he knew, Jerry. Ito said, I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think he just it to be excited. I, I believe. I believe he just, you know, knowing the area of the I didn't even know what was going on. Whew. Did it quiet down when they were getting ready for Jerry? Was did. Getting ready to kick it? It went dead silent, dead silent right before he kicked it. I mean, wow. dead silent. Hmm. There it is. Wow. Anybody have goosebumps? Or you guys are too old and sophisticated to have goosebumps? No. Uh, definitely you feel it. Yeah. <laughs> you feel it. <laughs> Even now, because nobody, like nobody, nervous. nobody, exact, nobody really talked to, you know, Ito except for Cali. So I was like, all right, mm-hmm. the kicker. He got it, though. Edo has it. And only Cali could be the one to talk to him. Come on, Cali. Get him right. The biggest holder yeah. in America, right, Cali? <laughs> yeah. There it is. Guys, we're hanging the ball in the skyway. Right here. <laughs> right there. Right, Edo. Call uh, out. The four. Well, I, have, I, I have one more feeling question for you, Coach. So you decide to kick it deep. And let, let me tell you, Jerry, 
I would fire me now if, if I did that ever again. Let me just tell you something. I, I'm not going to name names, but I had a special teams coordinator who came up to me and said, I guarantee you will kick it through the end zone. And like an idiot, I said, oh, okay. My goodness gracious. They had some good touchdowns against you all game. They had already run a touchdown. They already returned one from a touchdown. Yeah. Right. Trust me. Live and learn. Well, he only left you one second on the clock. Special teams coach yeah. killed 12 seconds. He knew. He knew that was going to happen. <laughs> he was going to I mean, remember on the, the first touchdown they ran back, Ito missed that last tackle. On this one, he kind of hammered the guy. Yeah, Ito was pumped up. Yeah, right there. Sure. <laughs> he, got, he got hammered. He got hammered. He's still – oh, my shoulder. That still hurts. It hurts my golf swing now. Last play of the game. You know we're running. Oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> they definitely stormed the field <laughs> early. We weren't Tomorrow, used to. Are you guys on? Are you on the last play? Yeah, we're did, just did yelling, get defense, off yeah. the field. We're just waving yeah. back and away. <laughs> we didn't want to get the yeah, I got the ball from the last play. I still got the ball. Do you really? Got the ball? Yes. I got the ball <laughs> from the last play of the game. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can it's see the Louisville awesome. Cardinal yeah. on there. Look at that. <laughs> I'm jealous, man. I was underneath the pile, and as the crowd jumped on me, I was I was literally underneath the pile, and it was so fun, and I couldn't, you know, it was fun, it was fun, but then you can't breathe because of the weight, and literally the ball just rolled underneath my arm, and I grabbed it, and I was like, get off of me, and I was just poking people in the ribs. <laughs> That's really the ball. This is the Louisville ball. Seriously? Wow. Yes. This is the Louisville ball. That's the one. Did you guys know they had the ball? Come no, I didn't know he had the ball. I can't wait to pull that ball out. <laughs> yep. I have it, man. That's classic. I don't, I don't have my gloves from the game because the fans took it off. I don't have my mouthpiece from the game because the fans took it off my helmet. <laughs> this is all I had, man. Our, our, the classmates were fired up. I mean, amazing. I know, feeling. You know, but other guys had all that stuff taken away from them, and they don't have the ball. You should be on a rotating basis. Every week, somebody else should get <laughs> They got to come take it from me. Hey, hey Jerry, it should, be, it should be like the Stanley Cup, right? They should carry it around. That's awesome, man.